In today's video, we are going to explain the difference between the LM317 and the switching regulator LM2595, which is adjustable. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Agile Electronics World and today we are going to discuss the linear voltage regulator LM317 with the LM2595 adjustable switching regulator. Actually, what's the difference of the linear and of the switching regulator? The linear is a regulator are great, but it works quite good with a very low power devices. They are easy and to use them and they are very cheap but and they are also very popular but they are extremely inefficient. So the linear uh, voltage regulator works by taking the difference between the input and the output voltage and it depends on the difference you have from the input to the output then the the waste of heat can be increased so that's the reason sometimes that when you are trying to to measure the the temperature of this uh, voltage regulator you will see that it start increasing probably you will need a, a heat sink and not probably actually definitely you will need one of these and it's not that efficient as the switching voltage regulator so a switching voltage regulator works by taking small chunks of energy so bit by bit uh, from the input voltage source and moving them to the output. Uh, this is accomplished with help of electrical switch and a controller which regulates the rate at which energy is transferred to the output. So that's the reason we, we call that switching regulator. So the energy losses involved in moving chunks of energy around in this way are very small. And the result is that the switching regulator can typically have 85% of efficiency, which is very important. And we need to have more efficiency. So practically it's good way to start uh, understanding what, how you can manage your voltage regulator with the linear, and then you can move on into a better application, if you want to make a better application, to the uh, switching voltage regulator. Let's actually explain what, so as you can see here, the voltage regulator, linear voltage regulator has three uh, pins, and on the other hand, the switching voltage regulator has five pins. Ignore that, I'm not sure why in the simulation it has the TAB, but usually the actual component is five pins. And as you can see here, I have implemented the design. So I'm using a battery, 12 volt. I'm using an electrolytic capacitor in for the input. This capacitor, it should it should be between, um, let's say, 100 to 200 microfarad. Similarly, we have the output uh, electrolytic capacitor. Again, around 100 microfarad, should, you should be okay. So you can, you can see also the formula here uh, in order to see how you can calculate the values of the resistors and also the values of uh, uh, of the capacitors. So the main purpose of uh, these two electrolytic capacitors is to improve the transient responses and is mandatory to use with every single regulator. You will see that on the data here, always recommended to, to be used from the input and the output. Another uh, important point is here the on-off, so the P number 5, actually you can turn on and turn off your voltage uh, regulator by switching, so you can use let's say a timer, 555 timer, or you can use a microcontroller, which you will be able to uh, 
uh, switch it on and switch it off. The value of the resistors I recommend it is 1k and I'm using also a, a potentiometer here which is 10k and uh, because we are going to exceed the 10 volt of, uh, of the input and the output so it's mandatory also to use a, a ceramic capacitor of uh, around 10 nanofarad you will you'll be okay in order to handle the, the greater than the 10 voltage um, here we are using uh, a diode which is a Schottky diode so the diode must be 1.3 times greater than the the maximum load current that's the reason we are using 40 40 volts of uh, of the diode also it's uh, it's protection for the reverse voltage so you can use just a shot key diode 40 volts and you you'll be fine let's say 3 amps because this voltage uh, regulator is up to uh, 1 amp let's see how it works so practically we have the 12 volt input as you can see if we run the simulator if we run the simulator now let's zoom in more in this area so it's at 60.64% and the input is 12 volt and you will see that the output is 5.6 and once we are increasing the value of the resistance you will see that it goes further down and at 100% we should reach 1.25 volts approximately yeah it's a simulation so yeah 1.23 and if you go on the maximum actually actually at zero you will see that the max voltage it will be 12 12 11.9 so we have some losses uh, around 0 0.9 volt in the reality and we are able to turn on the lamp pretty much that was it for today i hope you enjoyed and you learned something today so and i will see you in the next episode